Google was my friend because there weren't really a lot of answers forthcoming and a lot of knowledge forthcoming. I started getting hairs on my face, hairs all over my chest, hairs on my back. I couldn't put my finger on what was wrong with me. ACC stands for adrenocortical carcinoma. It's a rare malignancy that affects the adrenal glands, which are small hormone producing glands that sit on top of the kidneys on each side. Adrenocortical carcinoma refers specifically to a, a malignant tumour of the cortex, which is a, a layer of cells uh, on the outside of the adrenal gland. So it affects approximately one person per million per year. So in general, it seems to peak in the fourth and fifth decade. So that's people in their 30s, 40s, but we do see it increasingly in older patients and there are some rare incidences in children. It's in most instances, um, it is nothing that uh, predisposes you, like not any influence from the environment or anything you did wrong or smoking or so has nothing to do with it. Yeah, This is actually in the overwhelming um, percentage of patients. This is just something unlucky, uh, like um, the reverse of winning, winning the lottery, so to speak. Uh, and um, we know now through genetic studies that a small percentage of patients actually carry some genes that can predispose to a higher risk of ACC. But as opposed to other cancers, this is really only the case in a small percentage of patients. The difficulty with adrenocortical carcinoma is that it tends not to produce symptoms in a lot of situations. Many patients are discovered completely incidentally. So they may have a scan, an abdominal scan for you know, constipation, abdominal pain, etc., and that reveals an adrenal mass. Uh, in other patients, uh, sometimes they can present with signs and symptoms of hormones excess. So if a malignant adrenal cancer produces a hormone called cortisol, which is a steroid, then those patients could present with weight gain, hypertension, and other changes. I started getting hairs on my face, which was horrible for the female. Um, I has hairs all over my chest, hairs on my back. And also my hair started falling out. I went back to the doctors on numerous occasions. They took bloods, but not the right blood tests. Um, and so it, it went on and on and on undiagnosed. Um, eventually I went to see a private gynecologist and he said that I needed a hysterectomy. So probably about six months later, I had a full hysterectomy. I had my ovaries out, my cervix, everything. And then I thought, great, hopefully that'd be the end of it. But the symptoms got worse. ACC is diagnosed in a combination of uh, imaging, so a scan that is um, carried out to see what is going on in the tummy, what is going on with the adrenals above the kidney, and a combination of blood tests where we look for signs of hormone excess. But uh, we know from our patients that they sometimes have a very long journey, in particular if they are seen by centers that are not so experienced in looking after patients with ACC. To get diagnosed was an absolute battle for me. No one picked up on it, nobody picked up on it. Um, and this went on for two and a half years. And the crazy thing is, if they had just done one cortisol blood test, that would have identified all the problems, everything. I started suffering with really bad acid reflux. I changed my diet, I went to the GP, they gave me, prescribed me antacids, Gaviscon. It didn't get any better. I was losing weight um, they sent me for a camera down to check for a stomach ulcer. That came back with nothing. They ordered a CT scan and an MRI, took me in and she said, I'm sorry to tell you that you've got liver cancer. It wasn't until I came round from the surgery and I was in high dependency um, that they did actually tell me it wasn't liver cancer. Once he started cutting in and 
going to remove the tumour, um, they discovered it was renal gland cancer, stage four, with secondary on the liver. I had to ask them, what is an adrenal gland? Where are they? What do they do? And then they gave me limited information about the cancer. Google, which isn't the best way to go. Google was my friend at that stage because there weren't really a lot of answers forthcoming and a lot of knowledge forthcoming. As with all rare conditions, um, ideally these should be managed in, in centres where they see lots of it. And, you know, it's difficult when patients present to centres where perhaps there is less experience with these type of tumours. The majority of patients are diagnosed with sort of stage 3, stage 4 disease. However, it's very variable and, you know, some patients live completely normal lives in between you know, very involved courses of treatment. So my advice to those patients would be, you know, try not to read things on the internet. Put yourself in the frame of mind that this is a, a unique tumour to you and will we'll behave differently. And we try and tailor management and our treatment decisions to, to best match how that tumour is behaving. I think there's more awareness of ACC now and I just hope that more medical staff recognise that the symptoms of ACC are symptoms of ACC because the earlier it's diagnosed, the better. When you're first diagnosed, it's just an awful roller coaster. It's just awful. But over years, time is healing. If you've just been diagnosed and you're not sure, you've just got to keep asking questions and, and don't give up and seeking the right teams and seeking the right people in order to speak to. And I don't think it will ever go away. It's always at the back of my head, but I have learned to find a route for me where I can not let it control my life. I don't let it control me.